Hello and welcome to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Ed and this is the start of a series of videos where we are going to build a simple 5 inch gauge shunter and it is the first diesel LMS 1831. 1831 had a very interesting history and we've got a couple of photos to show. And the first thing you may notice is that I said we're building a diesel shunter and that is a photo of a steam engine. This is a section of an article that was in LMS Journal and it shows the sister engine to 1831 as originally built as a 1377 Midland Railway class of steam locomotives built by Vulcan Foundry in the late 1890s. Some of the engine did get transferred over to the diesel, uh, specifically its running number. Uh, its main frames and wheels were used. And that pretty much summed it up. The power unit was a six-cylinder Davy Paxman diesel engine and it was coupled to a hydraulic transmission of a very early design that drove via a crank to the leading and coupling wheels of the original steam engine. The prototype spent most of its time at Derby as a heavy shunter and it wasn't very successful having been manufactured as a diesel in the early 1930s it was withdrawn before 1940 and converted into a mobile power unit uh, and was finally scrapped in the 1950s and there's a better picture uh, of her in her working days, or well, certainly just as she left following conversion. So, why am I suddenly deciding to build 1831? Well, as a family with a four year old, we wanted an engine that we could put in and out of the car quite easily without faffing with the trailers and be able to take the apprentice out for an hour or so at our local club and without having to worry about waiting for the engine to raise steam before we could go for a run and then waiting for it to cool down before we could come home again. So I had a ferret around through the Model Engineers Laser database to see what we had and we had Edgar Westbury's design from 1941 note the date um, for a three and a half inch gauge model which was actually petrol powered in three and a half inch gauge Malcolm High who founded Model Engineers Laser, converted the original design and produced drawings for models in gauge one, five inch gauge and seven and a quarter. And as much as I do like uh, an OH shunter and the various derivatives, this is something a little bit different um, and we're deciding to settle on the five inch gauge version designed by Malcolm and this will mean that although I can run it at our local club we can also go to other clubs who perhaps don't have a seven and a quarter track so I wouldn't be able to take my seven and a quarter inch engines and also it will mean that I can take it 
to uh, GL5 events such as gilling and I can use it for shunting the yards instead of my pannier tank and again it will be something slightly different. So where do we start? Well because we are model engineers laser we start with some laser cut parts and this is the beginnings of the chassis and here we've got the two main frames which are in 3mm CR4 steel and then we've got these are the buffer beams uh, these are the outer buffer beams the ones that the buffers themselves will be fixed to and these are the inner ones if you look at the picture of the original one you can see that there was a tall plate and Malcolm has designed that to go behind the uh, sort of the normal buffer plank um, the full height of it to give it some strength and then these are the sort of webs that go behind the buffer beam that will take the coupling loads from the coupling hook out to the frames and then you'll notice that they're in the usual slot and tab format and they also slot and tab into the frames and these are fabricated horns rather than castings and we will silver solder those together and then at the top here are the parts to form the rods which connect the hydraulic drive and its crank from here to the leading and middle driving wheels we'll come to those later when we get on with constructing it we haven't got any wheels yet they are on order um, but we will carry on for the time being um, just putting these bits together first bits that we're going to look at are the two um, sort of stretcher gusset web affairs that go just behind the buffer beam it's these ones and they're a slot and tab assembly uh, that's where the coupling hook is going to come through you can see where the slots and tabs are going to go together to make this into a U section and then these on the ends are the tabs that are going to go into the frame plates themselves. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and cut these quickly with a hacksaw and then we've got to probably just tickle these with a file just to take there's a tiny tiny little burr on the back you can feel it you probably can't see it on the camera at all we well, maybe can I'm not sure um, that's just a from the cutting process that's that's perfectly normal um, there's sometimes when it goes around a 90 degree corner as well there is just a little bit of a um, just a little bit of a, a pip on the corner where it changes direction so we might need to just go and take those off as well um, we'll do that first I've separated those now just with a hacksaw nothing fancy no power tools just cut the tabs through in fact you can see the remains of one there um, I haven't bothered taking them off here because they're going to get welded anyway I have uh, took it off there just filed them off out of the way because that's going to go up against the back of the buffer beam um, so these now slot together they go just like so and form up the U channel that's going to go behind the buffer beam with the hook through the middle uh, you don't want to take very much metal off at all because you actually need them to be a pretty snug fit um, the when you assemble it the squareness is going to come from the fit of these parts so if you take too much metal off and they rattle around in, inside each other they're not going to hold their shape or squareness very well let me just rearrange things 
just rearrange the parts there so you can see them in film a little bit better. These are the two, the two channels. These are going to slot one, two, three tabs in one, two, three slots. They do fit. Just like that. There you go. Nice and snug and that'll hold everything in place when we go to weld it, which is what we'll do next. I've finished the welding now. These frames are all put together. Um, I've chosen to TIG weld them because that's what we do. And you see, there we are. That's the three tabs that were on the end of those U section channels that reinforce the back of the buffer beam. Those ones. So they're all welded in there now. Um, two, part, two part buffer beams there. Um, oh, and you can see on that side where I've just dressed it off with the angle grinder. So it's all nice and flat. And the other end is the same. There it is. The U section channel is welded in there. I'll go and dress this side off now. I thought I'll just leave it um, for the video. The uh, I used an Artec 150 amp TIG welder to put these together. Uh, set it about 9500 amps, and that should get nice deep penetration into the into the welds. Um, you can see. You can see it's just starting to break through there. So I reckon we've probably got, I don't know, 75% penetration in those, I think. Um, these on the bottom here, obviously you can't get an angle grinder in there. You could use a power file if you want to flush them off nice and smooth. In all honesty, they are going to be hidden away under the loco, so there's probably nothing to be gained. You do need to make sure because the frames are not symmetrical end for end. So you've got the hoop here. I think that's where the firebox used to be on the original steam engine. Um, was that the front? I can't remember now, it was either that one. And that's where the jack shaft is. So you need to make sure when you get them the right way around that the, the two, you can get a jack shaft on opposite sides. Um, the, Instructions that Malcolm put together recommend TIG welding. But he does also say, quite rightly, it's not a steam loco and it's never going to get hot like a steam engine does. So you could actually glue it together. Um, there's lots of modern adhesives available now. I mean, they, they glue cars together now. But the tabs that are on the end of here will help as a, as a key so that they pull through the, the hook is transferred mechanically to the side frames and it doesn't rely on the glue. Um, so you could, could glue them together if you wanted and they will be available, they are available, uh, pre-welded from us at Model Engineers Laser. I think we'll leave it there for this video. Um, we've got the basic frame put together. There's nothing else to do on this at the moment. Um, the next thing is probably to do the horn fabrications and we'll get them fabricated. They're going to take a little bit of work um, just cutting all the bits off and fabricating all the bits. So you've got uh, you've got the sides, the, the actual working faces there, the ribs that hold everything together. Um, I think that one's the top. That one, I think, is the horn keep. I need to check the drawings. Um, make sure I've got it the right way around, obviously, as you always should do. So I think what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll work on those next. Um, get them all separated and fettled. And then come back. Might also look at doing, if they arrive, might look at doing the wheel castings next. Uh, and I'll do a little video about that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Um, you can always subscribe to our channel where Holly is also doing a video on uh, Jack in, well, 7 8 scale. Um, and you can get updates as and when we produce new videos. Bye for now.